All right, so everybody's brew equipment is going to be a little bit different. Like I said, I got this from Northern Brewer. Uh, more, it came with more than this, but uh, we'll get to that in a bit. But this is my mash tun. You see, uh, basically it's just a big 10-gallon cooler. I got the biggest one they had. Um, and see, it just has a uh, ball valve on the front. And then the bottom, it's like a, it's a false bottom. So you see it's like a mesh. So we'll see what you use that for later. That's basically going to strain out the, the grains uh, when we're dumping it into the boil kettle. But uh, So what we want to do now is we want to get enough water so we can start heating it up for our mash. And you see, like we calculated, we needed about three and a half gallons of water. Uh, and you see the side of this cooler, let's see if we can get it in focus here. There are actually, there's measurements right on the side. There's three gallons, four gallons, etc. cetera, all the way up to 10. Um, so some, some batches that you make are gonna be a lot bigger. Uh, I just brewed like a, an Imperial Stout, an Imperial Pumpkin uh, Porter that I made, and that basically filled this thing up almost all the way. Um, so depending on how strong your beer is gonna be, will make a difference on how big of a um, mash tun that you need. Uh, I just got the big one just and I'm glad I did because like I said I have almost filled this thing up almost to the complete like very top of the thing before so but this is a, a lighter batch so like I said we're only going to use three and a half gallons so I'll just go ahead and start filling that up right now I'll just use water right from the sink here alright so we're outside excuse the leaves it's uh, we live in Ohio and um, it's November. Should be I should be probably cleaning these leaves up today, but still we're gonna make some beer. So, anyway, so we got the cooler out here, full of water. Um, so it's gonna go in this brew pot right here. This is I believe 10 gallon pot. Um, and then you got a burner hooked up to, of course, propane tank. Um, if you've brewed extract in your kitchen before, that's that's fine. But when you go to all grain. Uh, you really got to get outside, use a propane burner. Your kitchen stove just is not going to have enough power to heat up this much water. Um, a batch of this size, maybe you can get away with it. I don't know. Maybe if you had a gas stove, but I have an electric stove. Definitely would not even be able to, to boil um, a full, you know, five, six gallons of, of liquid. So a uh, burner I picked up about 50 bucks on Amazon, so it's not, not that expensive or anything. The pot honestly probably costs more than the burner. I think I paid about 50, 55 for the pot, um, which is actually a pretty good deal for a pot that size. And then you just get a regular old thing of propane. So go ahead and dump this water in and fire up the burner. All right, so at this point, got the burner going. I'm gonna go ahead and just put the lid on this thing. Like the recipe said, uh, it needs to be 153 degrees. And we wanna heat that up to 15 degrees above that. So we're looking for 168. Um, so you're gonna need a good thermometer. I got this one, really like it. It's a Thermoworks digital thermometer. Like I said, I just got it on Amazon or whatever. It's pretty much where I get everything. I think it was about 20, 25 bucks, but it's really nice. I used to use just a standard kitchen thermometer before. And uh, I found out that the, it was off a few degrees. So that can cause some problems. So just definitely get a good thermometer. It's worth uh, the small investment. All right, well, I'll keep an eye on this and we'll uh, pick up when it's at the right temp. All right, so the water's at 168, so I'm gonna go ahead and dump it back into the big cooler. Obviously be careful with this because it's pretty hot water. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and add the grain. As you can see, like I said, I got this on Northern Brewer, so they just give you all the grain all crushed and everything. Uh, this is all the different ones mixed in uh, that we saw in the recipe, so it's really easy. I'm just gonna go ahead and dump this in. Uh, it's a good idea to dump this in kind of gradually and mix it like as you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and pour a little in. Stir it up as I'm going. That way it doesn't get all clump, clumped up and all that.
So there, I got it all in. It looks like here. You just want to make sure it's stirred up so you don't have any pockets of dry, kind of clumped up grains because that can happen. And if that happens, you won't get your you won't get all the sugars extracted, so your batch won't have as much alcohol as as planned. Nobody wants that. So this is actually looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and take another temp so I can show you what it got to. So we heated it to 168, added the grains. Here's 153.5.3. And the recipe target said you wanted 153. So that's pretty pretty right on. Just a 0.3 degrees higher than what we wanted. But that'll do. It doesn't have to be 100 percent perfect. Just as close as you get it. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put the cover on. And this cooler will keep it nice and insulated. And we're gonna let it sit there for an hour. Which is what the recipe said. Take a look at that. See it has 60 minutes at 153. What this is gonna do, um, for the science of it, is it's taking the starches in the grain and it's gonna convert those to sugars. And of course sugar is what the yeast eats to produce alcohol, which makes your beer. So this is the, the pretty important process here. Without this, obviously you wouldn't have beer. And um, but yeah, that's all there is to it. You just gotta let it sit for 60 minutes. Now I'm probably gonna let it go a little bit longer because a lot of times my batches they won't they won't hit their target, the original gravity that they're supposed to, they'll be a little bit under. And um, the last batch I did, I actually let the mash go a little bit longer, closer to 90 minutes. And that was my, my most efficient batch I've ever done. Like I actually came in higher than than the target. So I don't know if the longer mash had anything to do with that, but I'm gonna let it go a little bit longer here and uh, and see if see what happens. So let it go longer does not hurt it. Uh, let it go shorter would hurt it because you want to make sure that there's enough time to get all those sugars converted. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off now and uh, we'll check in when this is about done. Okay, we still got the mash going out there, but in the meantime, I usually like to get the sparge water going. Uh, this is my second cooler. Um, see, it looks exactly the same. The only difference is it doesn't have a false bottom um, because this is just for the sparge water. So this water is going to basically rinse the grain in the mash tun. And so it's basically the only thing it's used for is to hold the temperature of the water that we're going to use. So. Um, like I calculated, we have nine pounds of grain, and um, so it's two quarts per grain, or two quarts of water per pound of grain. Comes out to four and a half gallons of water. So I'm going to go ahead and get put four and a half in here, and then we can take this back outside and start heating this up as well. All right, so we got four and a half gallons in the for the sparge water, and for the sparge we want to heat that to 175 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and dump this into the pot and light the burner up again. we still have the mash going uh, we're only about 30 minutes into that so I'm doing this way early but it'll stay plenty hot in these coolers so I'll just get it get it done get it out of the way That's it for that for now. We'll just wait a little bit longer till that's at 175, and then we'll transfer it back into the cooler, and then we'll just wait till the mash is done. Okay, the water is at 175, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pour it right back into the, the sparge cooler. Which once again is the one without the false bottom.
some pot holders. This thing is hot. So we got about an hour until we actually need this, but now it's ready. And it'll keep a nice temperature in there. These things are like perfect. Like it won't drop like at all in an hour, the temperature. So set that aside for now and uh, now it's just a waiting game. See, brewing takes a while, but there's a lot of breaks in between. So crack a beer, enjoy, kick back and relax. Now what we want to do is get the water going for the mash out. And what we want for that is a gallon and a half of water that we're going to boil. And when the mash is finished, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pour that into the mash tun. So I'm going to start getting that ready now. One and a half gallons, like I said. We'll see three of these. All right, the mash is finally finished. Uh, I let it go a full 90 minutes, which is longer than the 60 minute the recipe called for, but like I said, longer doesn't hurt. So I'm gonna see if it helps this time. And what I did now is I boiled that one and a half gallons of water, and now we need to add that to the mash. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Go ahead and stir that up a little bit. So what that'll do is that's gonna raise the temperature of the mash, which should stop the conversion see what the temperature is now. We're at 156 now. It's just not that much higher than what it was. Mix it up a little bit more. Yeah, that's all it is. So, didn't really raise the temp that much, but I don't think that step is really all that necessary. It's supposed to stop the conversion, but conversion should kind of stop on its own. You're supposed to let that sit for 10 minutes. Quite honestly, I've, I've uh, skipped that step before and it didn't seem to make any difference, but we'll let it sit 10 minutes. In the meantime, I'll get it moved over to where it needs to be. All right, so what I did is I moved everything over here. What you wanna do, a lot of people build like racks and stuff for this kind of thing, but I just kind of set it up on my deck. We got our sparge on the top, which is just the water. And then we have our mash right here. And then below is our brew kettle at the very bottom. <laughs> 